greet you in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Um, I apologize for the lack of heat. This microphone is freezing. <laughs> but there seems to be something wrong with our circulator, Floyd. Is that it? And so hopefully we'll have it fixed by next week. Um, the only announcements that I have are the thrift store from 10 to 3 on Fridays. Are there any other announcements? If not, let us begin. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> so our service person is on his way. And no other announcements, let us begin worship.
call to worship. We walk in darkness. We live in a planet of darkness. We have seen a great light. Light shines upon us. God brings us joy. Rejoice before our God. Amen. Let's pray together. O oh God, our light and our salvation, shelter us in your love. O oh God, our stronghold, protect us from danger. We come with shouts of joy to worship you this day. We come with song and music to celebrate your love. We come with longing to seek your presence. Be with us now, O oh God, as we sing your praise. Amen. We have opening hymn, hymn number 5, 6, 9. We have a story to tell to the nation. We are singing together. Mm-hmm. 
Hmm. Good morning, Esmeralda. Say, what are you doing staring at that glass of water? I'm trying to turn it into chocolate milk. Uh, <clears throat> As you can't turn water into chocolate milk, what makes you think that you can? Well, my friend told me that Jesus turned water into wine. I'm too young to drink wine, so I thought I would change it into chocolate milk. But it's much harder than you think. I just can't do it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I think you're thinking about the story about Jesus when he did change water into wine. A story. Another story about Jesus. Tell me to it, please. Well, one day Jesus and his mother, Mary, and his disciples were invited to a wedding. A wedding? I love weddings. The bride is so beautiful. The groom so handsome. I was in a wedding once. You were? Whose wedding? My Uncle Tommy's. My cousin Timmy was a ring bearer. He carried the rings on a pillow, and I was the flower girl. I looked so pretty in my long pink gown, and I got to throw flower petals at everybody. You threw flower petals at everyone? I think you were supposed to drop them on the floor for the bride to walk on. Yeah? Well, nobody told me that. I threw some petals at Timmy and he hit me with the pillow. Oh no, what happened then? Well, I dumped the whole basket on his head. He kept hitting me with the pillow. So I put the basket over his head so he couldn't see me. He started to cry and I started to cry and everybody laughed. I didn't think it was funny. Oh, Ez. Well, the wedding Jesus was invited to wasn't like that. You see, wedding celebrations during that time could last up to five to seven days. Five to seven days? Wow, that must have cost a pretty penny. All that food, all that chocolate milk. Actually, it was all that wine. You see, that's what they drank at the time, and it was a very important part of the celebration. You had to have a lot of wine because sometimes it would be a whole village who celebrated together. Were there flower girls and ring bearers? I don't know, maybe, but there were 10 bridesmaids. The bride would be beautifully dressed and even the groom would be dressed for this occasion. It was exciting and beautiful and a happy occasion, but then something happened. Uh-oh, they ran out of wine. Why didn't they just go buy more? Perhaps they had bought all that there was, thinking that it would be plenty, but it wasn't. So what happened? Well, Jesus' mom heard about them running out of wine and knowing that it would be very embarrassing for the bridegroom to run out of such an important part of the wedding feast, she told Jesus about it. What did Jesus say? He said, dear woman, why do you involve me? My time has not yet come. Did she get mad at him because he didn't want to help? No, I think she knew her son because then she told the servants to do whatever he told them to do. What did he tell them? He pointed to six huge 20 or 30 gallon empty jars and told them to fill them up with water. So they did. And then they grabbed a cup and took some out to take to the wedding planner. And what do you think was in the cup? Chocolate milk! No, silly. It was wine and it was very good wine, the best that there was. Of course it was. Jesus only makes the best. Yes. Well, the wedding planner tasted the wine and said to the bridegroom, most people give the best wine first and then a cheaper wine later, but you save the best till now. Did he know where the wine came from? No, only the servants who did what Jesus told them to do knew that Jesus had changed the water into wine. Why didn't they tell him who made the water into wine? I think that's pretty cool. Remember what Jesus said to his mom? My time has not yet come. What does that mean? I think it just wasn't the right time for Jesus to publicly show that he was the Messiah. This was the first miracle he did that showed his glory, and the disciples who witnessed it put their faith in him. I like that story, Jeannie. Hey, look, at my glass of water. It's turned into chocolate milk. 
Did Jesus do that? <laughs> Actually, I think Pastor Choi did that. He knows how much you like chocolate milk. Oh, thank you, Pastor Choi. Shall we pray? Dear Jesus, thank you for all the miracles you have done in our lives. Help us to recognize them and not to take them for granted. Miracles like nature and all of creation. Miracles of healing. The miracle of love. Thank you for our time together, learning all about you. Amen. Amen. Hey, can I drink my chocolate milk? Sure. Say goodbye, Ez. Goodbye, everyone. See you next week. Did you see the menu? <laughs> As time for offering, let us offer what we have as a gift receiving from God. So let us offer with things. Your rice. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here. Judah, in the southern area where the capital city was Jerusalem, 
and Israel in the northern area in which Samaria was uh, its central city. To avoid confusion, I will call the kingdom in the northern area the northern kingdom of Israel. So, during the reign of Ahaz, which was the contextual background of the first scripture reading, Judah was going through a very difficult time due to the rise of the Assyrian Empire. As Assyria emerged as a strong power in the east, its neighboring countries faced a crisis of survival. Syria and most of the countries in Palestine surrendered to the empire and began paying tribute. tribute. However, the excessively imposed tributes caused these countries to rebel. So, now Syria and the northern kingdom of Israel, which were geographically close to Assyria, allied to the world of the, the attack from the Assyrian force. However, it was not enough to fight against the huge Assyrian power, so they drew other neighboring countries into their alliance, and most of the countries joined it. But Judah didn't. The alliance sent an army to punish Judah now. Because they guessed that Judah might unite with Assyria, they tried to remove Judah, which might be a risk to the war against Assyria. So according to the Bible, said the heart of Ahaz and his people were shaken as the trees of the forest are shaken by the winds when they heard that the allied armies were preparing for war against Judah. And the king and his servants thought that they wouldn't be able to stop the allied attacks on their own. So there were only two options Judah could have. First, rely on God. Second, asking for military aid from Assyria. The former would be a method by faith, while the latter was a way by human experience and knowledge. If you had been in a hard situation, what choice would you have made? Certainly, you will answer you will rely on God. However, they didn't. Judah, the house of David, clung to the human way rather than the way of faith. God sent the prophet Isaiah to Judah and let him proclaim that the house of David should trust God and live by faith because the living God would be with Judah, his people, always. The prophet warned the king and his, his servants that an alliance with Assyria seemed like a good way to break through the immediate crisis, but it would eventually bring Judah to disaster. To disaster. So he emphasized that what Judah really needs to look at is their living God rather than Assyria. Here, the prophet is not saying that believing in God will solve all problems smoothly. He honestly admits that Judah will not avoid the storms of history. The prophet does not say optimistically like, because God is with us, everything will be fine and right. No, instead, the prophet spoke of the suffering that God's people would go through. Nonetheless, the reason why he proclaimed the faith in God is that he could look forward to a new future that God would lead after God would lead after adversity. It is God who would achieve salvation, not Assyria or the, the allied forces. In the end, the living God becomes the light and leads his people to break through the time of darkness. 
The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. And this God is always with God's people. In our lives, we experience so many things and events like war. As we pass through the warlike tunnel of time, we shed tears and we are suffering. As I mentioned this, you may be recalling what and when those warlike times were. It may be things in the past what things you still go through now. And I was at such a time last year, as you know. Honestly, I'm still feeling I'm going through it. Around this time last year, I was not able to be with my father passing in pain and could not go to my father's funeral. It became a big trauma for me. Sometimes I feel I'm still going through a ton of pain and suffering. I don't think this pain will go away completely. It will remain as a scar. It will go away when I complete my earthly life and go to heaven. However, when I look back on those times, I can yet thank God for the things that God has tried to comfort me in some way and give me the strength to keep moving forward. Like, through my family, who always keeps me smiling, even in pain, and through solidarity with my family in Korea, who are suffering together, and through the comfort of my church family, and friends who have supported me. What I realize now is, God has always been with me in some way, and God is the only one I can rely on more than anybody else. We humans are bound to face difficulties from the moment we are born into this world. And I better know, I better know it thanks to my son, Jace, you hear his sounds, right? <laughs> How often he cries so sad, so sadly, and always tries to find his mom these days. And how often he bumps into something or falls while running. Probably he might be in the learning process of how to gain wisdom to go through difficulties from very small things. When we face troubles and hardships, sometimes we work out the problems well, but sometimes we fail and get frustrated. Also, there are times when unknown fear creeps into our hearts and takes hold of us. When we face hardships, experience failure, and are seized by fear, our rational, our rational judgment is clouded and it leads to wrong thinking and behavior. I'm not saying that our reason and wisdom coming from our experience are bad. No. Rather, indeed, God created us to think rationally, to gain wisdom from our experiences in the past, and to live wisely with them in the present. However, what we must be wary of is that we forget, we forget God who is our Creator and Savior, Sustainer. So we must not forget that Immanuel God, who is always with us, is our light and sustains our lives. When we forget this fact, we become our own saviors. And when we face difficulties, we can be easily falling into an endless abyss because we have nowhere to turn and rely on. This is why the psalmist confesses that he seeks and relies on the light of God. And this morning, the psalmist encourages us to confess together, like, The Lord is my light 
and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The fact we must not forget is we are beloved God's children. God's beloved children. No matter how much we fall, we cannot fall outside of God's grace. We can never be alone. So just like the psalmist, we can continue to confess. One thing I ask for the Lord is I seek to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in His temple. If the Lord were to ask all of us what the only wish we would like to achieve with our life right now, then I wish and pray we all can say and answer, walking in the light of Emmanuel. Sisters and brothers in my, my sisters and bri brothers in Christ, who do you talk to first? when facing life's challenges. Our lives will be different if we ask the Lord, what should I do, even just once before doing something? Although we go through countless darkness on our life journey, the light of Emmanuel is always, is always piercing the darkness and becoming a good navigator in life. God is with us always, and becomes our shelter even when we feel no light is discovered in our lives. Indeed, He will hide me in His shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of His tent. He will set me high on the rock. Indeed, may the Spirit of God help us persevere with faith, hope, and love and lead us to seek the face of God, who is our salvation. Amen. And we are singing King number 206. I want to walk as a child of the light.
Let us pray. Lord, you transformed common water into wine at a wedding in Cana. May our common lives be transformed by your presence. As you have taken on our humility, our humanity, may we now partake of your divinity. We pray for the church throughout the world, particularly in those places where people are persecuted for living their faith. We pray that every country and every government might honor people's right to worship in freedom. And we especially lift up the United Methodist Church and your churches in our community. We pray that we become a beacon of light, shining on you and your love for all peoples. Give us strength and courage and the will to do whatever task you have asked of us. Lord, we remember all who have run out of resources, the hungry and thirsty peoples of the world. We remember the exhausted and all who cannot, can no longer cope on their own, all who are struggling to provide their families for their families and their basic needs. We remember all who are in trouble or in sickness. And Lord, today we especially lift up Ken and Dee Finney, for restoration of his mind and strength for her. And Lord, we pray for those who are waging a battle against cancer. We pay, pray for strength, comfort, and courage. We lift up Donna Coombs, Raphael, Catherine DePew, Christy, Stuart Zucro, Teresa Henkel, Sandy Donahue, and we pray for others who are facing difficult challenges in their lives. Barbara Weinkoop, Stevie Bradley, Bruce Donahue, Troy Schmack Snyder, Bruce Avery, and Tom Vista. Lord, we just give all of these people into your hands. We pray, Father, that you would surround them with your love, with your strength, with your comfort, with your healing. And we also lift up the family of Bob Smith. We ask that you give them strength, comfort, and peace on the loss of their beloved Bob. We lift up others that are unspoken but on our hearts. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy sake, the power of the Lord Amen. Closing him. The face we sing, number 2236, together our skin, and everyone rise, we are singing together.
Here is a prayer of blessing for you. The light that enlivens all the world, the light that darkness cannot overcome, love's pure light in Jesus Christ, shine on you and in our world this day. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm.